Greetings YouTube, JC, Bad Edit Pro with a video about audio and today we are going to talk about a classic vintage phono cartridge, the Pickering V15. Now the picture you're looking at is me back in 1988 at my school radio station and this is around the time that I got my first Pickering phono cartridge. An engineer gave me this cartridge because the entire radio station had Stanton broadcaster cartridges and there was one Pickering that was sitting back in the shop and he handed it to me and he said, do you want this? And I said, sure, I'll take it. So I took it home and put it on my turntable and for the first time I had a cartridge that matched the quality of the Stantons that you see in this rather fuzzy picture that was scanned from a newspaper. By the way, for you phono fanatics out there, the turntables are Techniques SP-15s. And the tone arms are either Techniques or Reco Cut. I cannot remember what brand of tone arm they were, but those are Stanton Broadcaster cartridges on those turntables. I started thinking about Pickering phono cartridges a couple of weeks ago after me and my wife were sitting around listening to tapes that were recorded around the same time as the picture you just saw was taken. She commented on the audio quality. She said, that sounds really good to me. Where was that recorded and what were you using? And I explained to her that I had a Pioneer PL518, just like the one I just got, and I had a Pickering phono cartridge on it. And she said, well, that sounds a lot better to me than anything you've played me on any of the setups that you have currently. So I explained to her that Pickering was, as far as I knew, out of business, and I wasn't going to be able to get a Pickering phono cartridge, which is very unfortunate. However, after doing a little searching online, I happened to come across a shop in England that had... Uh, some Pickering phono cartridges on sale as new old stock. Now, further research has actually pulled up more questions than answers. I don't know whether Pickering is officially out of business or not. Pickering was merged with Stanton uh, some time ago. I don't know exactly when. And uh, there is no website for Pickering phono cartridges specifically. Some people have some Pickerings that are new old stock that they are selling. But uh, if you go to the Stanton website, there's no link to Pickering. So I don't exactly know where that is, but I do know that Stanton still makes replacement styluses for most Pickering phono cartridges. This was one of their most popular cartridges, and this dates back to the early 70s. Uh, this is a classic phono cartridge, the V15 series. Now, I don't know exactly when this was introduced, but I was able to find a reference to it from 1972. So we're definitely talking about a classic phono cartridge. Just the other day, a package arrived from Vickers Hi-Fi in merry old England, and in it was a Pickering V15 phono cartridge sealed in the box. I mounted it up to my Pioneer PL518 turntable, and this is a picture that I took of the setup just last night. It proves that life really is a great big circle because you could have taken pretty much the same picture in my room 20 years ago when I was still in school as I had a Pioneer PL518 and a Pickering cartridge back then. Everything comes back around sooner or later. Finding historical information about the Pickering V15 phono cartridge has actually been a bit difficult. In preparing for this video, I did a lot of web searching, and I couldn't find a great deal of historical information. I did find out that the cartridge has at least been around since 1972, because I found a reference to it in 1972, but what year it was introduced is still a mystery. Also, the exact state of the Pickering Cartridge Company is up for grabs as well. I don't know whether they're defunct or whether Stanton is just not doing anything with it. Pickering was merged with Stanton some years ago. Stanton still continues to make replacement styli for Pickering phono cartridges, although I don't think any Pickering cartridges are being produced today. There are a couple of resources on the web with published specifications for the Pickering V15 series. However, they're very inconsistent. So the ones we're looking at here for this video are the ones that were published in the little pamphlet that actually came with the cartridge. I just scanned it in. 
The first thing you'll notice is that this cartridge has a blisteringly hot output at 6.6 .6 millivolts compared to uh, most cartridges on the market today that run 4 or 5 millivolts, and some of the very high-end cartridges are actually lower than that. Some of the Hi-Fi Stanton cartridges are in the 2.5 to 3.2 range. The tracking force that is recommended for this particular version of the V15 is 2 grams, and it all depends on what stylus you get. There have been several styluses that have been produced for this cartridge body through the years. The D5E is the latest elliptical that was available. You could also get a, a conical stylus, a 0.7 mil for stereo, or you could get a mono stylus with a 1 mil stylus tip that was... Uh, specifically designed to play records that were produced before stereo so you could play your old LPs and 45s from the 50s and 60s and get a good groove match there and of course they have a 78 stylus available as well. With the D5E stylus the tracking force is 1 to 3 grams with 2 being recommended. On my particular cartridge I have found that 2.5 tracks a little better so we're running it little higher up into the range there and I think that has to do with the fact that this cartridge has probably sat for a very very long time before it came to me so I'm gonna to have to loosen up that cantilever a little bit but uh, 2.5 grams is definitely respectable uh, for this cart running it at 2 there's no audible mistracking but it tends to want to skip very easily you can just barely bump the turntable and it'll jump and that's all cantilever and it needs to be worked out this is a medium compliance cartridge. This is not a super high compliance. Uh, so it's designed uh, with a slightly stiffer cantilever. This is kind of halfway between what the DJ cartridges of today are that track at 4 and 5 grams. And then you have the hi-fi cartridges of today that track anywhere between 1 and 2 grams. This is right in the middle. So 2.5 is definitely an appropriate tracking force. And uh, one of the interesting things about setting up the Pickering is the fact that you have that dustomatic brush. You have to compensate it when setting tracking force by adding a gram. So if you want to track at 2.5, you actually set the weight to 3.5. And then when the stylus actually goes down on the record, the brush starts to ride the surface of the record and that weight is taken away. So the actual tracking force on the stylus is 2 grams. Now, for those of you who run across these cartridges, either Shure or Pickering or Stanton, and you don't know where to set your uh, anti-skate, set your anti-skate for the tracking force you're going after on the stylus, not the overall tracking force you set to compensate for the stabilizer. So in the case of this cartridge, you set your tracking force for 3.5. The stylus is actually tracking at 2.5, so set your anti-skate for 2.5. Here's something you don't see in the world of audio, a 10-year warranty. The UK distributors of Pickering were so confident in their products that they offered to replace any Pickering cartridge that was found to be defective within 10 years from purchase. The V15 series of cartridges from Pickering was their middle-of-the-road line of cartridges. The XV series was aimed at a hi-fi market, while Pickering also produced lots of cartridges that were used in professional situations like radio stations, nightclubs. They even made cartridges specifically designed for jukeboxes. So this is a medium compliance cartridge somewhere in the middle between the professional line of cartridges with uh, the high tracking forces and the super hi-fi cartridges that were designed for uh, very precise turntables. This makes this cartridge extremely good for medium mass to low mass tone arms on manual turntables, automatics, and uh, I've even heard people say that they work very, very well on uh, dual changers and high-end BSR changers, if uh, you're into that sort of thing. On the uh, audio boards that I've read uh, references to this cartridge on, uh, people have kind of put down the audio, which I have... Uh, I find to be kind of interesting because to me it sounds great. First of all, it sounds as good as the cartridge that I had 20 years ago. When comparing it to a couple of modern cartridges, the AT120E by Audio Technica and the M97XE, the distortion is extremely low. And uh, I especially like the way it handles vocals. Pickering cartridges have a little bit of bump in the upper mid range. Uh, that really brings out the clarity of things like vocals, cymbals, saxophones. I'd really dig that. 
And uh, the frequency spread is very nice. It has great low-end bass with a lot of thump because of that high output going into the preamplifier. And the high end is is very crisp, but still silky smooth. And uh, there's very little sibilance uh, with this cartridge, which was nice to find. And uh, the inner groove distortion is uh, almost not there. Uh, in comparison, the M97XE has no high end at all. And if you have a preamp that you can tailor the capacitance and EQ to the cartridge, you may be able to get better results than I'm getting from standard preamps. Um, the audio sample that I posted from the M97XE, I had to actually EQ the high end to bring it out. Uh, listening to it live, it's a, a sort of a dim sounding cartridge, especially when compared uh, with the wonderful high end that comes from the Pickering and the super crisp high end that comes from an AT120E. So it's going to be fun to listen to this cartridge as it breaks in, and we'll see how it, uh, it does over time. I'm very tickled with the sound, and uh, I've gotten a lot of vintage equipment in the last couple of years, but this is the first vintage phono cartridge. <laughs> Thanks for watching the video. JC, Bad Edit Pro, waving bye-bye.